Welcome to FaithWorks, the enlightening and empowering program that builds your faith to help you overcome every single challenge in this life. My name is Kaude Adeshoga. I'm your host. I want you to sit back, listen, and be blessed. God bless you. Mark 4, I read from verse 1. And he began to teach by the seaside. And there was gathered unto him a good multitude, sorry, great multitude, so that he entered into a ship, sat in the sea. And the whole multitude was by the sea on the land. He taught them many things by parables and said to them in his doctrine, Behold, hearken, there went out a sower to sow. It came to pass as he sowed. Some fell by the wayside, and the fowls of the air came and devoured it. Some fell on stony ground, where it had not much earth, and immediately it sprang up because it had no depth of earth. When the sun was up, it was scorched, and because it had no root, it withered away. Some fell among thorns. The thorns grew up, choked it, and it yielded no fruit. Others fell on good ground and did yield fruit that sprang up and increased and brought forth some 30, some 60, some 100. It's a parable of the kingdom of God that tells us about life what we will face, and what we can attain to. It gives no limit to what we can attain to, which is the hundredfold, which is the very stature of God himself. What he says in life, some along the way in advancing may fall out and not make it because, he said, the birds of the air can cause it. So here at least... What makes people fail in life? And then it explains why people make it in life. I was looking at Isaiah 60. It says, Arise, shine. That's the main text for 2020. For your light is come, for behold, darkness. Then it occurred to me, if light is shining and there's darkness around, what's the essence of the darkness? The darkness can enter the light. And it dawned on me, the darkness is to distract the bearer of the light. For in its own, it has no power to stop the light. It cannot. Then he said to them, He that have ears to hear, let him hear. Say, I have ears to hear, and I hear. When he was alone, they that were about him, with the twelve asked of him the parable. And he said to them, Unto you, it is given to know the mysteries of the kingdom of God. Say after me, say, unto me, unto me it, is it is given to know, to know the, mysteries the mysteries of the kingdom of God. Of kingdom. You can now personalize it, say, unto me, unto it, me. Is it is given to know the mysteries, the mysteries. that will help me will help navigate you. life navigate successfully. Life. You know, in Psalm 27, he said, 27 or so, he said, I will guide me in a smooth path. You can move in a smooth path. It's a choice. No rough path is ordained for anyone. They what about Paul? They said he would suffer many things. He suffered because of lack of knowledge. He said, a messenger of Satan was sent to buffet me. And I prayed three times to have it removed. The Lord said, my grace is sufficient for thee. In Acts 28, when he understood what that grace came to do in his life, how to harness it and how to use it. The Bible says Paul rented his own apartment, preached. Two full years, no man disturbed him. Where was the spirit? Gone. How did they go? God, no. Paul did it when he gained knowledge of what to do. Said in Hosea 4, 6, my people are destroyed. For what? 
lack of knowledge. There is no smooth path ordained for any man. There is no rough path ordained for any man. It's all a function of knowledge. Actually, everybody has a rough path ahead of them, except there is no glory in their star. So Satan lines it with thorns and death. When you understand the mysteries of life, then you will navigate it smoothly. Say, so thou will take me in a smooth path because of my enemies. Praise God. So there are certain things you need to understand. God didn't put rough for this, smooth for this. Satan put rough for everybody, especially those who he considers a threat, that they are making it will shortchange his kingdom. He lines it with trouble. But if you understand the mysteries of the kingdom, how it works, then in the midst of those troubles, you will navigate smoothly. And you will walk in a smooth path. Praise God. So that messenger remained until, until Paul knew what to do. The moment he knew what to do, the messenger was out. And the Bible says, no man, no man disturbed him again. No one. Life can be like Eli. He's not the first to receive God's judgment. It's the Lord. Let him do what he so will. David too received God's judgment. He cried and it was what? Upturned. The Bible says he shows no favoritism to anyone. The prodigal son didn't have life cut out on a rough path. He chose a rough path. However, because he understood the navigation of life, he navigated out of the rough into the smooth. The elder brother didn't even understand any path. So he didn't even advance into purpose at all. He told Moses, you will not see the promised land. And he tried to beg. God said, don't talk to me about it. And he left it. <laughs> and Eli too left it. Well, I don't know why they left it that way. But God will not rest, neither will all of us rest, until I have what I want. Amen. May God give you grace and knowledge to know how to navigate life successfully. And it dawned on me, it's not what happens to you that matters. It's how you respond to it from the word of God that matters. So, Jesus said in interpreting the parable, this is the parable of life. That seeing they may see and not perceive. See, tell me, say, I see, I see. And, I and I perceive. I hear, I hear. And, I and I understand. In verse 13, know ye not this parable? How then will you know all parables? So without this parable, you cannot know any other parable. Then it contains the engine room of all parables. You know, like we say, the scripture is not fulfilled in one place. You can read John 16, is it 23 or so? Whatsoever you ask the Father in my name, he will give it to you. If you just go like that, you may not get anything done because it's not complete there. You have to add 1, 2, 3, 4, John 3. If we ask anything according to his will, he will hear us. You must ask according to his will. First John 5. This is the confidence we ask. If we have anything, if, sorry, First John 3. We receive those things we ask him because we do those things that are pleasing unto him. First John 5. This is the confidence we have. If we ask anything according to his will, he heareth us. If he heareth us, then we have the petition granted. Then we now have Philippians uh, 4. Let be careful for nothing, but in all things let your prayer be made known to God by prayer, supplication, with thanksgiving. So it's all together. So there's more to this parable. But I'll stick with this parable because it answers enough questions to deal with these last days we're in. So I'll leave Matthew 13, the parable of the task. 
I'll leave Mark 4.26, the parable of the grain of a mustard seed, which is still all incorporated into this. Verse 14, the sower sweareth the word. These are they which are sown by the wayside, where the word is sown, but they have heard. Satan cometh immediately and taketh away the word that was sown in their heart. And those who are sown on stony ground, when they've heard the word, immediately receive it with gladness. And have no root in themselves, they endure for a while. Afterwards, affliction and persecution arise for the word's sake. Immediately, they are offended. And once being offended, they fall out. So what's the essence of the persecution and affliction to get you offended? That's why I said the darkness is not the issue. The darkness on its own can do nothing. But it is there to get you offended. So what is the sign of the darkness? Stolen phone. A, a reckless driver crashing into your beautiful car. And the likes and the likes. What's the essence of that? To take your eyes off the light and get you angry such that you leave the light and Satan can take the word and walk away. And that's all. It's not your phone. What's he going to do with your phone? Your car? What does he need your car for? He needs the word in your life that will make you great. And that's why he's attacking those things to take your attention off the word. When you understand, you know where to keep your focus. And the day you can't find your phone, heaven does not have to fall. You can always talk like in 2 Kings when he says, but I had for a thousand talents of silver. He said, God is able to give you much more. Take your eyes off that and focus on the covenant. You are getting distracted. That's what they told the king. You're getting distracted. You're thinking of a hundred talents of silver. God can give you much more. Leave those soldiers. Say, but I've lost. Say, leave the loss. It's nothing compared to what is before you. But Satan is trying to use that to distract you from what is before you. And you must understand how these things work. When you do, what moves people will move you. <laughs> Praise God. What moves people will never move you. And you will get a hundredfold. You can get a hundredfold. You can get to the ultimate journey that God has marked for you. It's very simple and it's very easy. The good thing is Satan has no new tricks. They're the same thing he's been doing for the past 6,000 years. He has not changed. The same old tricks, they're still there. The birds of the air, the cares, the thorns. There's nothing new. Verse... 19, and cares of this world, deceitness of riches, lust of other things entering in. What are they supposed to do? They chop the word and make it unfruitful. And these are they which are sown on good soil, good ground, such as hear the word, receive it, bring forth fruit, some 30, some 60, and some a hundredfold. There are five things that stop human beings from making it in life here. Number one, demons, which is a direct attack, the birds of the air. That's the lowest of them all. And I think I said this some time ago. If Satan attacks you directly, you see a dragon attacking you, or you see a bird chasing you, your strength is small. Very small. He didn't do that with Jesus. He came technically with Jesus. He came with the word to attack Jesus. So the birds of the air, but we're not looking at that today. The second thing is that, and of course, he's going to steal the word with the birds of the air. Now, he's not going to come and slap you off. No, 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 no. It's just an attack, a word. But let's, look, let's leave that for now so we can make our time to look at what we want to look at today, which is cares. The second thing he uses are persecution and affliction. But we can see the persecution and affliction has no hurt. What hurts the plant is lack of understanding. So the persecution and the affliction cannot stop somebody from making it in life, but it can stop somebody who does not understand what persecution and affliction is. The third is the thorns, which are deceitfulness of riches. 
cares of other things. I was with a young man who said, I said, we're talking about finances. I said, four billion. He said, God forbid. He said, four billion will corrupt you. I said, four billion will corrupt you. I said, a hundred billion. We have not even started. <laughs> That's a deceitfulness of riches. Riches cannot corrupt. It cannot corrupt. It does not what? Corrupt. A bad heart will corrupt, not riches. But a bad heart, riches will corrupt a bad heart. A heart that is not sound. One said, I told God, I don't want riches or poverty. I want just what will be enough for me and my family. I said, you are selfish and self-centered. So where is the money for the poor in your hand and the less privileged? Even from your family, there are people you should take care of. So it's only you and you alone. That's the sin of the rich man. Be careful. It can cut short your life. That's what deceitfulness of riches can do to a man. The rich man came to Jesus and said, what do I need to do to inherit eternal life? Jesus said, give up everything. He couldn't. And Jesus said, this is what happened to those who have trust in riches. So he had trust in riches. And that cost him destiny in life. But not riches. Trust in riches. Do you desire to live and operate God's way of doing things? Do you desire to understand how faith works? Fundamentals of Faith is a book written by Coyote Adishoga. It teaches in simple terms how to operate the God kind of faith that helps you overcome all hurdles of life. Fundamentals of Faith is available for purchase at Trem Bookshop Obani Koro Lagos and Bible Wonderland Stadium Suruleri Lagos. Get a copy today. This morning we're looking at cares that choke the word of God. What is a care? It's a Greek word that means to divide the mind into two. Through anxiety, perplexity, worries, occupying the mind with things that are not needed in your advancement. <laughs> Listen carefully. This is what Satan uses to stop people. And that darkness that you see surround in Isaiah 60 is going to present either, oh Jesus, either as the birds of the air, which is a direct attack of Satan, or persecution and affliction, which is also a darkness, deceitfulness of riches, which is darkness, cares of other things, which is darkness, and then lost, which is also darkness. Abraham asked God, what would you give me? Seeing Eliezer is going to be here. God said, you are distracted. Abraham, that thought that you just had has no bearing on your purpose. There are thoughts that are important but have no bearing in your purpose. Abraham, in making you great in life, we didn't put Eliezer's name. Neither his son. Don't discuss such. Discuss what is relevant to your moving forward. Your mind, there are cares there. It's divided and it's dividing your focus from what you're supposed to be looking at into what you ought not to be looking at. I remember I was talking to a lady, she was praying, I want to pray that my husband will not look at women. I said, that's irrelevant. If he looks at women or does not look at women, does not make any relevant. What is relevant is that he fears and loves God. He can fear and love God and look at women and everything will be fine. If he does not fear and love God, he doesn't look at women, 
it doesn't need to look out, it will still not be fine. I said, so that's a care that is distracting you in life. It means to divide the mind and not make the eye single anymore. Yet God says, when you see these things, look up. Keep your focus. He told Habakkuk, said, Habakkuk, stop looking at the Chaldeans. Stop looking at this army. Look at the vision I wrote to you. Write that vision so plain that even on top speed, you can read it completely. While you are traveling on speed, write it so that you can write, read the vision from the beginning to the end. He said in Deuteronomy, he said, put this word at your gate, at your door, in your house, everywhere. Let it saturate everywhere. At your door of your heart. He said, put it everywhere. Let, read it day and night. The ones that have no bearing to the fulfillment of this word, don't look at it. The ones that have a bearing to the fulfillment of this word, you can consider your phone has no bearing to the fulfillment of this word. If you get lost, don't throw heaven down. Face the word. God is able to give you much more. Don't let Satan use phone to take you out of the race. It means to confuse. To cause a person, they say they're depressed. That's Asa in Psalm 77. He was getting depressed. He said, I, he said, this is my problem. I'm considering things that has no bearing in my making it in life. I remember someone told me, said, I know a young man, he's a Christian. I said, yeah. He said, he prayed an average of 18 hours a day. He fasted three days in a week. He never missed fellowship. So when he talks, he talks scripture like you. <laughs> that was way, way, that was good. So anytime he's talking, <laughs> not now, like this. If he talks, it's all word. We greet you, good morning. He quotes Psalm. That's how he replies you. He said he was walking on the streets on campus and lightning struck from the sky and struck him dead on the road. So what do you think? He said, I will be struck by lightning on the road. I will live long and fulfill purpose. Don't compare me to him. So he said everybody in fellowship is scared. <laughs> you won't be scared when the most spiritual has been struck dead. <laughs> With lightning. <laughs> Praise Jesus. It means to occupy you with things that will cause stress rather than peace. Disturbing thoughts. Many times it's caused by trying to live with man's standard or time pressure. Amen. You know, one of the things I love about the history and archive of God's generation. Now, these are men that have a good report with God. And you know what I love most about them? It's not the act of faith that they did. It's not the act of faith that they did. No, that's not what I love most about that list. It's the shortcomings in their lives. That's what I respect most and the people that have a good report with God. I was telling somebody, I said, if Samson runs for election in Nigeria, you will vote for him. Because he's morally despicable. You want a leader with integrity. But that's the leadership you need for the church, not for the nation. For he says, if a man would desire the office of a bishop, let him be married to one wife, not given to wine, and the list and list and list but in political leadership, is different. You won't vote for him, then you live under bondage of the Philistines for the rest of your life. You vote for him, you wake him up on the laps of a harlot, but you are safe. Then it dawned on me that those that have a good report with God don't have to be perfect. Then I don't have to be perfect. I just need to follow through that word. Even falling, I will rise and keep following okay. If we start with the list, the drunkard Noah and the man that God has made pregnant, Abraham was a pastor today's age 
He's doomed. He will never make it in life. Never. Not with men. He's made. He's made. Got her pregnant before his wife. There is no forgiveness of sin for such a man in today's age. And the list goes on and on. Moses is a murderer. And on and on and on. The Bible says, for with them, they have a good report with God. Matthew 6. You know, I was studying, I, like, I don't know why I like the number seven. I might be distracted or something. <laughs> I don't know. I just like the seven. Not that I like the song, seven, seven, seven is a no, no. <laughs> I find that there are seven things the Bible says that you must not be ignorant of in this life. When you walk with God, you study him, you find out what he hates is not what man hates. What he loves is not what man loves. Actually, they contradict. They big no ignorant of spiritual gifts. That's 1 Corinthians 12. In 2nd or 3rd Peter, 2nd Peter, sorry. He said, be no ignorant of this for a day with the Lord is like a thousand years, so don't run beyond your ability. Calm down. We will get the job done. God. It is man that says that you enter menopause at 45. God has no menopause. God has no time counting. You can give birth at any age. Say you want to raise them at youth, there is no guarantee if you give birth at 20 that they will end up well in life. The guarantee is that God will raise. They said, and our children shall be taught of the Lord. It's God that gives that guarantee. There's no guarantee that they will outlive you. It's God that gives that guarantee that they will outlive you in age and time. I believe you have been blessed by that message and I know your faith has been built up and I know all those challenges in life are all going to fall before you in the mighty name of Jesus. I want you to know Hebrews 12 says Jesus is the author and the finisher of our faith. You need him in this walk. And so if you're out there and you don't have Jesus in your life, I want you to say after me, say, Dear Lord Jesus, I believe you're the only begotten Son of God. Come into my life be my Lord and my Savior. It's as simple as that. Displayed on the screen is diverse information on how you can interact and reach out to us. Take advantage of it and I'll be expecting to hear from you. Till I come your way again same time next week, I want to tell you don't give up. Faith works. It's working and it will work in your life. God bless you.